All right. Well, welcome to the Indie.net Consortium. This is our March 3rd, 2021 meetup. Very excited to have everyone here. Uh, we are brought to you by Theorist, 1150 Academy, OzCode, and Launch Fishers. Um, oh, we're not doing lightning talks. That's just my placeholder slide. <laughs> and tonight's topic, very excited to have uh, one of our founders. Ooh. And a great man and a good friend, Tim Parham from Theorist. He's going to be talking about Endepend, which I forgot the uh, capital D. Forgive me, Tim. Uh, I know, I know. It was it was quick, and I realized the slide was wrong right when I started. Um, so he's going to talk about Endepend and writing better code. Very excited about this. Um, we are also brought to you by the .NET Foundation and... They're a virtual user group, which is very cool. Check them out. Um, they, uh, you can see all the user group uh, meeting, the meetup 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 meetings that are happening around the globe, all in one place that are .NET related. So very cool stuff. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, and oh, we're not doing the fishbowl rules. That's all done with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, if 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 COVID wasn't happening, we'd all go get drinks afterwards, but that's not the case. And I'm going to say, Ajia, excited for Tim to present and take it away, Tim. All right. Let's see if I can figure out how to show my screen here. Yay. Okay, everybody can see, I guess, the Visual Studio right now. No, actually, you're, I see a frozen image of you, which really? was a little bit ago. Does anybody else see that? Yeah, all I see is a frozen image as well. Yeah, he looks frozen. Oh, did we lose Tim? No, I'm here. Yeah, he's, his audio has been good. I don't even see an image. The so. image is, is frozen. I see, I, I see him surrounded by two lights. It must be, it must be ghosts. <laughs> let's try it let's try again then how about the uh, powerpoint can you see the powerpoint nope you're just you're just frozen well we're off to a bang up start aren't we hey i believe in you there we go there's an activity yeah, yeah was, you can see, see me again, again. <laughs> yep <laughs> That's not quite what I had in mind, but. <laughs> hey, Wally, Greg, uh, when when people join, make sure that you make them an attendee instead of a presenter. That yeah, way, no still he starts presenting. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know there was an option. I just <laughs> yeah, you'll see there's in. like three dots next to next to them. Okay. Hey, that's better. Move for meeting. It's very close. It's okay. like right next to, but we still can't see your screen, Tim. Are you oh, kidding okay. me? Not kidding. So John, don't do any presenting. I can still see, I can still see your red, white, and blue uh, logo on your shirt. Yep, that's really there. Yeah. I didn't realize you had a cat and a dog. Why are they on that desk behind you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you froze again, Tim. Froze you must again. be trying to share your screen. I am trying very hard nope. to share my screen. You're moving again. Yep, you're moving again. He stopped frozen. sharing. That's, yeah, he's frozen again. Share content. There we go. <laughs> One more time. Nope. Frozen. All right. Maybe you should restart. I think that's about the only option left. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, make sure you share the right screen or quit Teams and come back in. That's what I'm doing. Poor Tim. I guess I can't I can't pause recording. So now we're going to have this awkward silence. Oh, could you, <laughs> could you start it later? I could, but then we'd or miss do, we'd we'd lose the intro. Or I can always edit. I can always edit it later. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you stopped it, you'd have to use Premiere or something to edit them together. Yeah. Or then I'll find out, you know, that I've got a machine like Tim's or a service like Tim's, and it'll just like not even let me start recording again. I'll be like, no, and Tim will ask for a copy, and 
be like, I'm so sorry, Tim, forgive me. And you know, then I'd be mad. I don't want Tim to be mad. Well, this is life in the present age. Yeah, this is true. You know, had only we used Zoom, we'd be able to have a 30 minute meeting. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna. The only option I have is admit or view lobby. So, I just admitted Tim. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so thanks for letting me back in. I don't know if he can present or not. Oh yeah, he I can. Present. Yeah, he's a presenter. Okay. I didn't see the option. <laughs> is it working now, Tim? Oh, there we go. Now we got hey. it. Yeah. Yay! All right, hey Tim, I'm gonna bow out. So uh, enjoy your presentation. I'll check it out later. And uh, we we need to go get a drink soon. <laughs> okay. Sounds Yay. Good. Yay. Um, enjoy all. Other than that part, what are you guys <laughs> seeing right now? The two slides. You're seeing two slides, aren't you? I see your PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah, two slides. Two slides. All right. Well, at the risk of messing it up, I'm we're just going to go with it like that. So tonight we're going to talk about Independ um, and hopefully writing better code um, by using. Uh, static code analysis tool. Um, I know uh, there's several code analysis tools on the market, um, some free, some paid. Um, this is a uh, paid version. Um, I've been using it to do uh, code reviews, and it's been pretty helpful. Um, offers code based snapshots. Um, uh, visual dependencies. Um, it comes with a set of predefined rules, but you can also create your own rules. Um, it's a pretty powerful tool. So, um, not going to stick with the slides very long. We're going to switch over to Visual Studio and uh, take a look at it. Um, basically, <clears throat> to get started, um, we attach a project. So, I have um, use the Microsoft open source uh, OData web API library uh, for this presentation. Um, standard stuff. Pulled it down from their GitHub repository. Um, and then we're going to get started with Independ. Um, after you've installed Independ, you've got a couple options here. You've got your extensions and then your Independ options. And then you get this. Uh, circle lo logo in the uh, lower right corner um, allows you to first thing you have to do is attach a project so we're going to attach a new independent project it comes up and it picks the assemblies um, it excludes the test assemblies but you can add them if you'd like I'm not going to bother for tonight um, Basically, click the Analyze button and let it go. Get a visual res representation down here in the corner, as well as the uh, list running here. Once it's done, you've got a few options. Um, you can jump into the dashboard. Um, they've got some interactive graphs, charts. Um, you can look at code rules. Um, I typically work with the dashboard, but we're going to start with the HTML report. Um, it's a pretty straightforward report. Um, gives you access to tree map, dependency matrix, different diagrams. Um, the thing I like about it is, is we get a lot of metrics, um, and uh, it does its best to figure out how much technical debt you've incurred on a project. Um, and how much time it's going to take to remediate some of the issues, as well as, uh, you know, failed rules, failed quality gates, um, all those kind of things. Um, how much of your code has been commented, all those kind of things. 
Um, and then down at the bottom, you get a gate summary and a rule summary. This is basically a list of the rules that have been violated, how many issues there are for each one. Um, so um, these are really just snapshots. Um, not a whole lot you can do with those. Um, heat maps interesting because it shows you trouble spots. Um, but again, I spend most of my time on the dashboard because I find that um, a lot more useful. Um, this is really just uh, a basic report. So, um, it takes us through there and dashboard and uh, skip that reports and graphs. All right. So I've been through the HTML report. Um, from within Visual Studio, we have uh, our independent menu that we looked at earlier, but here's where we can get to our dependency graph. Gives you a vis visual representation of the code um, and the dependencies. You can click on different pieces, um, drill into it a little bit. Um, really kind of it. Um, you can also get the matrix. Here the matrix is a little more useful than on the HTML view because you can actually um, dive back into the dependency graph and see what's going on. Explore everything. Um, what else is there? Here's our heat chart again with uh, the ability to dig in a little bit. And then take you right to the code. Um, but like I said, I find I find the dashboard personally to be most useful. I'm not necessarily somebody who gets a ton out of the different charts and graphs. Um, I really just want the metrics behind what's wrong, um, what's going on. So um, it's useful. You can click on something um, on the dashboard and it will bring up the, the rules explorer, um, list the issues, the problems, um, click on an issue. Over here we get a, represent, or a, a list of what the problem is, what's going on. Um, and then we get a nice, um, Here's what's going on. And then we can drill down into the actual rules violation. So avoid types too big. Um, gives you a description of what the rule is. Um, you know, they consider types where there's more than 200 lines of code. Uh, to be too large, and they should be refactored and broken down. Um, everything is based off of uh, C link, basically, or uh, CL link. Basically, it's uh, link syntax to query your code. So, if you don't like a rule, you can, you know, modify it. Um, you can you know, disable it and do whatever you want. You can write your own rules. Um, it's pretty flexible. Um, what else we got? So yeah, review the data, explore the debt. Oh, groups and issues. So it does allow you to group your issues by types, by rules assemblies, namespaces, however you want to break it down. Um, we can dig into debt and issues per code element. Um, 
you can adjust the settings. I really don't mess with that a whole lot. Um, I mentioned that it keeps a baseline when we uh, when we make some changes here in a few minutes. Um, you'll see that it'll give you a count of not only what's violated, but how it's changed since your baseline. So, you know, are you are you slowly wiping out your debt or are you adding new debt as you go? Um, I guess the other thing to point out on the critical rules and source code is a lot of them. Now, that's not a good example. Here we calculate how much debt that is. So you can actually modify the rule to, if you find that, you know, their estimates are too high, too low, you can adjust the estimates. Um, just by writing C sharp code. Um, all right. So I guess let's jump into the improve and refine metrics. So want to fix an issue. Um, let's just dig in and find something. Object-oriented design. What's a good one here to grab? There's an easy one. So again, we can look at the description, it gives you an idea of how to fix it. Um, this one's a simple one. We're just going to uh, append attribute to the name. Takes us to the declaration. Save it. We'll rebuild the solution. This one takes a couple of minutes, but it's not too awful. Um, Feel free to jump in with any questions if you have any as we go. I guess I should have mentioned that earlier. So what does debt mean? What, what, is, what is debt? Uh, technical debt. Basically, um, the bad practice. Oh, that's not good. Um, the bad practices you followed when writing the code. Um, at some point, uh, you're probably going to want to fix those things. And technical debt is those things that need to be fixed. I think I saw somebody about writing about the number of to-dos in code. <laughs> yeah. There's, they're always there. So what? I have a quick question. Is is Endepend available for Visual Studio for Mac, or is this Windows only? Um, uh, it is available for Mac as well, I believe. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. What does a license cost? You know, I'm not exactly sure. Um, we can go look that up here. 
after a bit. Um, I know we are going to give away a license to one of you tonight, so. All right, so we've got it fixed from that perspective. Did I really just type it wrong? Yeah, it was better. So now we can run our analysis again. And we can see that that rule is no longer an issue. We didn't actually see any reflection in any change because we now have a violation, if I can find it, that we have potentially made a breaking change by uh, changing changing the name of the class. Um, Oh, let's try something else. So it feels that classes with no descendants should be sealed if possible. So we had a couple of these. I guess I got a little too aggressive.
Um, While that's running, we'll go over and dashboard. Okay. Well, that's run, and I also mentioned that we can um, disable some rules if we want. So look at, I don't know. Avoid name type. Uh, types with name too long. So this rule is basically saying we don't want to give a type a uh, name greater than 40 characters. Um, maybe that would be better if. So, um, you know, different places have different, uh, different code standards. Um, I'm going to say I don't care too much about uh, having types with names that are too long or methods with names that are too long or uh, fields with names that are too long. So we're just gonna go ahead and disable those. Save that. Rerun our analysis and we can see that our issues, well, once it refreshes, we'll see that our issues are dropping. Um, from what we've fixed and what we've uh, just disabled. Um, you also have the ability to suppress a violation. So, um, you know, if if you have justification for violating one of your standards, then basically you can use an attribute um, to, to tell Endepend to ignore that uh, violation uh, and put in a justification as to why. So if we go to avoid types too big, um, Yeah, which one of these? matter. So just add an attribute that says, you know, suppress message. This is the message we're going to suppress. Well, and that's the justification and that sh should have worked. There we go. So we see that there's 20 of those last time we ran it. Um, lost my dashboard.
Oh. Mm -hmm. You do have to rebuild. We can take a look at uh, modifying a rule, I guess, in the meantime. Um, avoid types with too many methods. So they define a type with too many methods as 20. Um, somewhat arbitrary. I've seen it defined differently at different shops that I've worked at. Um, with end-depend, if our rule is different, we can simply view the source code and um, say we want to make it 25 methods or uh, 25, yeah, 25 methods. Um, just make that change there and there. Save it. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, sorry, headphone cut out for a second. Um, so, and then the other one we were looking at was the suppression. Um, types too big. This one that I did, right? Oh. There, so we see it's only 19 now. Um, and the one where we modified the rule. Types of too many methods is down to 15 violations now. So that's kind of it. Um, so leave it to you guys for questions. What is a quality gate? Um, let's pop over there and so. Basically, it's rules defined as quality gates, I guess. Um, things that, if if those fail, that um, by the independent standards, you should probably not be pushing this code into production. Um, So if if you if you look closely at these though some of them are repeated. Um, um, the the rules that are defined as quality gates are the ones that they have deemed to be highly critical. Right, um, they're blocking you from 
from delivering your code. And somebody asked about uh, the cost, right? Yeah, it's like about $400 a seat. Yeah, I, I looked that up, and it's uh, that's British. Oh, yeah, you're right. That, and converted, it's five hundred fifty-five. Was wasn't it? Can convert it to dollars. It's five hundred fifty-five dollars and eighty-nine cents. Yeah, for one seat. Although you can get a free trial for a few days. Yeah. And we've got one. Uh, We've got one to offer uh, tonight if anybody's interested. I guess uh, just uh, shoot me an email. Um, put my email in the chat here. Shoot me an email if you're interested and uh, pick the lucky winner. You guys are probably seeing the team's meeting now. Yeah. Yeah, there's a slide. Um yeah, I guess it was kind of short and sweet, but that's the gist of it. Um if you got any more questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Does it, does it have a, uh, a standard set of rules uh, so you don't have to create everything from scratch? It does, yeah. Um, I mean, it comes with, I, I didn't, I didn't add anything. And now I got to drag this over. I didn't I didn't add anything to the rules that you guys saw tonight, so that's all out of the box there. And Visual Studio is quite co cooperating, so it's just not coming over. Well, I guess if there's no more questions, we can uh, wrap it up for this evening. Thanks for attending. Hey, thanks for presenting. Sure. Yeah, it looks like Ari Thank must you. still be serving the, the booze. <laughs> Shocking with that. <laughs> Do I have any chance to uh, stop the recording here? Uh, I may. Let me see here. Mm. It'll probably stop once everyone leaves. Yeah, well, it says Ari started it, so that's, but there's no, there's no time on it, so I don't know. Hmm. I see. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I see time ticking down, but oh, hmm. yeah. Well, looks like he's the only one that's got an option. So, all right. Well, if he's going to edit it anyway, why? Well, yeah. You can just do some yeah. another edit. <laughs> there we go. All right. Have a good night, guys. Yep, okay, you too. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye-bye.